Hey everybody, Ryan here at E-Trailer. Today on our 2022 GMC Sierra 2500, we're going to be showing you how to install the Pace Edwards Ultra Groove Retractable Tonneau Cover. But before we do that, why don't we check it out and make sure that this could be the right setup for you. So when it comes to picking out a tonneau cover for your truck, you know, there's a lot of different styles of them out there. And to be honest with you, I'm, I'm partial to the canister type like this one here. Um, there's some others out there that are similar as well that I like, but the way these work is whenever you open them up, they just kind of roll up into a canister at the front of the truck. And we'll get to that in a minute, but I feel like you kind of get all the main features and not really have to sacrifice a whole lot. So for example, you know, security, uh, you know, maybe you always keep your tools back here or, uh, other valuables, whatever the case may be, you know, at least this is going to have a barrier on the top of your bed. The top's made from a vinyl, but underneath it is aluminum. And could you get through there? Probably, I mean, nothing's entirely bulletproof, right? But it's gonna take quite a bit of effort. There's some of these too, uh, it's identical to this essentially, but it's all aluminum. So that's something that interests you. You can always uh, go down that road as well. But, you know, I'm not sure if every one of these Sierras has it, ours does, but the tailgate locks. And so when the tailgate's locked, I mean, there's no way you're getting in because the tailgate has to be open in order for you to open up the tonneau cover. Uh, another thing you got to think about too is keeping everything dry. You know, this is actually kind of goes above and beyond uh, with seals and drains and everything else, this particular cover to do just that, keep everything dry. Uh, so I feel like it'd do a pretty good job there. You know, if you're really not worried about security and uh, you just want something kind of over it, you know, there's other options too. I'm, I'm sure we've all seen those kind of the vinyl roll-up ones. Those do okay, but you know, you kind of get what you pay for. They're kind of cheap. They start falling apart over time. And with this style, uh, they hold up pretty well. And lastly, you know, whenever you do need full bed access, right? So you want the cover completely open, this one rolls up and it's not in your way. There's some other ones that are uh, like trifolds, for example, they'll fold up in two, three, four different sections. And with those, the issue is, once you fold them all the way completely up, they stick up and they block your truck's back window. So, you know, just something uh, you need to think about whenever you're deciding on what tonneau cover to get, because at the end of the day, it's something you're gonna have to live with and, and use all the time. Do you want to mention if your tailgate happens to have this uh, fold away deal, you can still use it, tonneau cover doesn't interfere with it or anything like that. Um, so you're not going to lose that feature by any means. But the way this works is you're going to have a strap here. That's how you kind of pull the cover to you. And underneath here, there's a knob and you turn it and that's going to release it. And with these, you kind of have to figure it out a little bit because I'm always tempted to turn this and like kind of help push the cover forward. But when you do that, it kind of hangs up. So you kind of just have to let it do its, do its own thing. And see, I'm still trying to get used to it here. When you do that, you start to slow it down and that's how you completely open it. So it, it's kind of self-propelled if you will. And what you can do as well, when, you, when you're pulling this back to you, Every now and again, you can hear a click and it'll lock in at certain intervals. So let's say if you have a, a partial load, you know, maybe, I don't know, a, something with a long hand, maybe a lawnmower or something like that back here, you can at least close this halfway if you want and uh, provide some protection uh, if that's what you're trying to do. If not, you know, you can leave it completely open or close it completely up. One of the things that does kind of help separate this cover from some of the others is the fact that you can still use uh, accessories over your bed. So a lot of times it covers, you put the tonneau cover on and you're just kind of uh, out of luck in terms of being able to use some type of rack system or crossbars or other types of accessories. This one actually has built in, uh, they're called, it's called the T-Track. And so there's a groove here and that's gonna allow you to take those crossbars or racks, whatever, and slide them in here and mount them up that way. Uh, that way you can still use that type of stuff and be able to use your tonneau cover. So pretty cool there. Uh, I do wanna mention though, with this setup, it is going to cover up the stake pockets. 
Um, so if you're someone that already happens to have uh, some type of accessory that utilizes the stake pockets and you'd like to carry it over to this particular truck, you know, the covers is not going to work. But the good news is there's quite a few other ones that are very similar to this that um, uh, a lot of times they'll have special rails that'll kind of cut out around the stake pockets and allow you to use those type of accessories as well. So regardless of what you got or what you're trying to do, uh, there's probably going to be a good option for you. I do want to address one of the big questions that a lot of people are wondering about, and that's if the cover is going to interfere with like a fifth wheel hitch. And that's definitely understandable because some things are heavy and big. And if you don't have to unload it, you'd rather not, right? So if you could leave the fifth wheel head in here and close the cover, excellent. Um, to be honest with you, I've done quite a bit of these covers as well as fifth wheel hitches, goosenecks, all, all that type of stuff. And I've yet to come across one that actually interferes. So I'd have a fifth wheel hitch in here and close up the cover and nine times out of 10, even actually last week, uh, uh, I just put a fifth wheel hitch in a truck. Uh, I believe it was a GMC 3500 actually, and it had a ton of cover like this on it. And that hitch was up as high as it could possibly go. It was a Kurt A30 fifth wheel hitch. And I could still get my whole hand uh, in between the hitch and the ton of cover. So, you know, that was kind of a great example actually, because the hitch was up so high and, and a, a, a larger fifth wheel hitch, a 30,000 pound hitch. So chances are really good, unless you have a really strange setup or something that's sticking way up in the air, chances are really good. Uh, you're gonna be able to have your fifth wheel hitch in here and still close up the cover. Do you just wanna uh, give us a quick measurement here? And that is how much space the canister is gonna take up in the bed of your truck. So right now it's fully, uh, opened up or in as far as it can go rather and i'll measure from the front of our bulkhead to the very edge here that's going to be right at 13 inches so if you can do something with that measurement great you know if you're concerned maybe are you going to have enough space for your fifth wheel head here or you know if you're trying to pull your four-wheeler motorcycle up here um, if you need that measurement you got it and you can kind of go from there so I did earlier talk about, you know, the sink keeping water and everything like that out. Usually a lot of these covers will only have drain tubes in the front, uh, for the, you know, at the bottom of the canister. But this one on each end here towards the back of the tailgate, there's another drain tube. So there's kind of a channel or a catch, almost like a little gutter in here. So if water would happen to sneak in, it would kind of get into that gutter and have an additional place to drain. That way it won't have to go all the way to the front, down through the canister and out. You know, it could just roll straight back here and through the drain and out to the bottom side of our truck. One thing we really didn't touch on is the way this is gonna look. Uh, I actually think it looks pretty good. You know, it sits somewhat flush and that flat finish. I mean, you really can't go too wrong, right? This one, the top being made out of vinyl, um, you know, there may be some concerns there. Actually, my brother-in-law, he's got a 19 F-150. And about two years ago, we got him this exact cover. Uh, with the exception, his don't have the T-Tracks in it. And I guess that was about a couple years ago. He don't pull his truck in the garage or anything like that. It stays outside. Don't particularly go the extra mile to keep it real clean or anything. And the cover, we, we were concerned with it almost kind of fading. And with his, there's none of that so far. So I think it, you know, it, it looks almost as, the same as day it did at, well, when we took it out of the box. So I think after a couple years of that, constantly outside, probably not gonna have nothing to worry about. So, um, you know, that kind of put my mind at ease a little bit because I was hoping he'd be happy with it, right? So, uh, which he is. But other than that, at the end of the day, I mean, kind of good all around town of cover. It's easy to use, looks good easy to figure out, and it'll keep your stuff dry. So really can't go too wrong there. As far as getting it installed uh, is concerned, really not too bad. Um, there's a couple times in the directions where things are kind of just unclear, uh, and that's what kind of hold me up a little bit here and there. But hopefully, um, you know, our video can kind of clear things up a little bit for you and, and shorten the install time. Uh, so if you'd like to see how that's done, feel free to stick around. We'll go ahead and put it on together now. To begin our installation, uh, what we're gonna do is start to assemble our canister and our rails. 
So make sure you have the correct one. These are side specific. And once you identify which one you need, there's gonna be some foam tape that's on here. And what we'll do is just go ahead and peel off all of the backing paper. So our rails are going to kind of slide into the canister and might be a little tricky to see, so I'll do my best to explain it. But if you look right here, there's gonna be this lip, right? And I'll flip this around. So it's kind of a, almost a track. And what we're gonna do is you're gonna take this this way and slide it in and you're gonna go up until about out here about the middle you know three and a half four notches up and when you're at that point you can then rotate it like this and continue to slide it forward and what we're trying to do this piece of the rail you want that to fit in to this track here and eventually this threaded hole in the rail is going to line up with this hole down here and to make things a little bit easier, you can take uh, these right here, this piece, push that in and scoot the cover back some and keep it drawn in like that. Um, and that'll hopefully make things a little bit easier. So go ahead and try to get this done. So I'll go to about there probably, I'll rotate it down, and continue to slide it forward. Hopefully we can get it to take. Might take a few tries to get this done, make sure everything's lined up, but eventually we'll get it. So this is what it looks like uh, once you have the track in there and everything. Sometimes you will have to kind of push on it pretty hard. The powder coating and stuff can kind of just get hung up in the track. Uh, but once it's in there, I mean, it's pretty obvious that you're lined up and everything. Uh, but you're going to push the rail forward or towards the canister until that hole we talked about lines up. And then once it does, you can take some hardware here. I can hold on to it. You're gonna have a screw. Then you're gonna put on a split lock washer. And then a flat washer. And then we'll go ahead and get this started uh, to secure the rail. So you get it lined up straight. We'll go ahead and snug it down. Once we're done doing this over here on this side, we're simply just going to repeat the same exact process over on the other side because it'll be set up the same way. Just kind of a quick pointer too, if you're having trouble keeping that latch pushed in like we talked about, what you can do is push it in and hold this back and then just take some painter's tape and kind of tape this all up and that'll keep enough pressure on it to keep that latch uh, out of the way. Now with the next set of hands, we can take our assembly here and essentially just kind of bring it all the way to the front of the truck and set it uh, roughly in place. So we look here at the end of our uh, bed, we're gonna have our stake pockets, these openings, and at first I didn't think we were gonna need them. I thought these rails were gonna cover them, but it looks like they're not going to. And so they give you some of these covers that you can put on there. Uh, clean this area down with some rubbing alcohol, let it dry, and this is essentially just a sticky piece of plastic, so we'll just line it up over our hole there and stick it in the place. At this point, we can set the gap between our tailgate and our cover. So obviously you wanna do this with the tailgate closed, but if I have it closed, you won't be able to see absolutely anything. So I'll just try to demonstrate what we're gonna be trying to do. If you look at the rail, where it kinda of comes up and 
it has an angle there and continues back. The very end of that plastic, you want this to have a slight gap from where your tailgate meets. So when you close the tailgate, it'll be, be close to it. And to set that distance, you can take this tool that they give you and you want it to be that thickness there. So you can kind of put that in like that. So imagine if your tailgate's closed, you want to be able to slide that in um, and have that gap there. So once you do this side, you're going to do the same thing over on the other side. And not a bad idea just to come back and check again, make sure nothing got moved around. And uh, that'll kind of set the positioning for our rails here. And I want to mention from this point on, anything we do to one side, we're also going to do to the other because it'll be set up the same way. So now we can get our foam installed and what I did, because obviously to do this we have to push our assembly back, I just, when it was in place from measuring it from the bed, I put a piece of tape here and then I just marked kind of the edge there where it was originally sitting. That way we not only kind of know where to put the foam, but also um, be able to put this back in the same spot. So it comes to putting this foam on pretty straightforward. Make sure this area is clean and dry, and it's just sticky tape, so. We'll go ahead and start to lay it. So for this model, um, once our foam's on, we need to take these shims. So there's a white one and a black one. I just stuck them together and you need to actually put these on our sticky tape. So kind of right here where the plastic bed rail starts, somewhere about in that area. Let's go ahead and push those down in place. Once you get your foam in place, make sure to you know lift your assembly back up and line it up with the marks that we made. Probably not a bad idea either to close the tailgate and just double check it again back there. But once you verify it, everything fits correctly, we can take our front cover here and drop that on down into place and we're going to line it up and that will line up with some nuts in there and so we can take these screws and get them started. I like to get each one started hand tight uh, that way we can ensure proper alignment of this front cover and then once we have them both started come back and tighten them down at this point we can take what's called the clamp extensions and get these on so they are labeled <clears throat> so you got front left and then uh, you know the other one back left so left side of the vehicle being the driver's side so you want to start with the front one first that way when we get it on we can slide it all the way up towards the front but with these this track here is gonna go around this track and this flat side with this pad on it, it's gonna sit like that. So we can scooch the rail out some, try to work this on. Sometimes they can be tight, you know, a little piece of rubber kind of holding it up or whatever. Trying to make sure you're on there straight and eventually you'll slide on and so I'll just continue to push this one all the way up towards the front. Same thing essentially for the back one. Get that on and then we can push it up and if you look on that track there's a spot that has kind of a relief cut in there. For the back one, you want to bump this right up to the edge of that relief cut, and that's where it's going to be positioned. For the front one, the one that we slid all the way up, there will be another relief cut. With that one, you want to position it just in front of the relief cut. So being on the back one, we'll slide it where it needs to be. And then up through this opening here, there will be an Allen head screw. And so we can work our key up there and tighten this down. Now we can get our clamps on. And with these, uh, they're gonna be front and rear specific, so make sure you have the right one. Uh, for a reference point, we're here at the back, closest to the tailgate. And this is the clamp that you wanna use. It just has one bend in it. 
um, kind of like a J. Uh, the other one will have another one of these round deals kind of on the radius there. That one will be for the front. But the way these work, they're going to slide in place like that. And then you'll have this piece here that slides over it. And then what you can do is grab one of these bolts and pay attention. Two of them are just a little bit longer. For the ones back here, you want to use the shorter uh, ones. With that said, you'll take a split lock washer, flat washer, and this piece here, that'll go on the back side. You're going to put this bolt through and get it started. And once this is snug, you can take this piece, uh, I believe they call it a kickstand, and this is going to go, this part's going to go through that opening there. And the whole point of this is to get that end on a flat spot, or as, as best as you can at least. Kind of get it somewhat lined up and then where we put the bolt through the clamp that is going to take some additional hardware you're going to put on flat washer split lock washer and a wing nut i'll just snug this down and then come back and give this an additional turn or two just to make sure it's snug as well. So here at the front, this is how this one is set up. Essentially the same other than the differences we talked about. So you can see that bracket has an extra round piece there. And again, make sure you use the bolt that's a little bit longer. Now we can get our drain tubes installed here at the back. So these are gonna kind of slide in. The issue is, um, you know, we don't really have a great spot right out of the box here to run the tubes down and drain them. So I've looked behind here. I think what I'm gonna do is drill a hole. It'll be a straight shot and down directly to the bottom side of our truck. Obviously every truck might be set up a little different. Probably wanna look up under there for yourself, make sure there's nothing back there. And I suggest if you have one using a step bit like this, that way, you know, you don't get carried away and slip or something with the regular drill bit and end up punching through the other side of your truck. So uh, just keep that in mind. But I'm going to drill an opening just large enough to get our drain tube through there. Once we have that opening created, uh, what I'm going to do is kind of file down some of these sharp edges. I have a die grinder bit, but you could use a regular hand file, that'll work as well. So I went ahead, put some black paint around the bare metal just to make it kind of blend in and give it a layer of protection. And then right here, we're going to have uh, to go the drain hole right there and so kit's going to come with these pieces that's just going to kind of slip on there and then we're going to take our hose and work this all the way down put it on our fitting and make sure it's connected. As far as the drain tubes in the front are concerned, those are just gonna push right into the bottom of the canister. So they kind of just snap in. And then where to actually route your hose, it works out really well. Um, there's some factory holes in the front of the bed, and those are there to actually allow stuff to drain. And so the far outside ones, I simply just enlarged a little bit Again, using my step bit and the same method that we used for the back and just routed our hoses uh, down through there. What we can do now, uh, they give you 
a piece of hook and loop strap. Um, and there's a, a big piece here uh, on the strap that you use to actually pull the tonneau cover out and everything. And the reason for this is you can stick it to here and then secure this up underneath the rail. And the reason for it is if you're trying to load stuff up or whatever, you know, you could come in here and push that up there and it's gonna kind of hold it out of your way. So nothing really to it here. Kind of put it in the spot wherever you see uh, best fitting. And I'll peel it off and just place it right under the rail. What we need to do now is lubricate our seals here. So up in this area where the uh, actual cover is going to roll in and out, they give you a pad that has some lubricant on it. And so we're just gonna wipe all these seals down until they're uh, completely coated. Lastly, really all that's left to do is just test everything. So when we open it, it should be relatively smooth not bind up or anything, which that felt really good. We'll push it back in. So that feels really good, operated smooth. So I think we're in pretty good shape. If yours happens to hang up or get in a bind or anything, you might have to make some adjustments, you know, whether it be tightening a clamp down more, shifting a rail over one way or the other, or whatever the case may be. But Usually, um, you know, if everything goes pretty smooth, covers could operate um, uh, properly on the first try. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Pace Edwards Ultra Groove Retractable Tunnel Cover on our 2022 GMC Sierra 2500.